I don't need to go to God and say, God, you've got to give me food this week, and I don't know where it's going to come from. If I can take it, then I don't need to trust God. And then I wonder, why is it that God seems so far, and why doesn't He answer my prayers? Maybe because God's pushing your faith just a little bit more, just a little bit more, and you and I take the easy way up and say, I'm going to fix it because God hasn't answered my prayer when I want it right now. But God's saying, look, I'm going to give you something more. I'm going to give you peace, man. I'm going to give you peace because I am going to provide every one of your needs. I'm going to provide for you. I'm going to let you trust me. I'm going to take it and show you miracles that, that you wouldn't have thought of. God says, come on. You're not going to steal because you're not worried about anything. You're not worried about where stuff's going to come from from life because I am going to provide all of your material needs. Well, Brian, if that's the case, hallelujah, I'm quitting my job. I'm going to sit at home watch my big screen TV that the Lord's going to provide for me. I'm going to kick back and enjoy my life. <laughs> All right, it's only a good plan. But you see, God has a mission for your life. He has a mission for you to impact people. And you know what? Your ministry in the workplace is greater than my ministry of being a pastor. Because you talk to people every day that don't know about God. And I'm a pastor. You're simply a blind guy saying, I was blind, but now I see. I was ordinary, but now I'm extraordinary. You touch people I can never reach. God has put you into a job and a career because he wants you to bring glory to himself. Because I believe that Christians, radical followers of Jesus, should be the greatest in their industry. You should be the best in your industry. You should grow your businesses as large as God wants to grow. Why? To the glory of God. When you walk in and see the floor that John Lamaster laid down, you should look at that and say, that is an act of worship, man. That is glorifying God. That is beautiful. That is great work. If I take my car to a mechanic who professes the name of Christ, I should be looking at a guy who's going to be honest with me, and not only that, does great work because he knows he's working on the stuff that God gave me. When you do whatever it is you do, accounting or business, delivering pizzas, working in a hospital, whatever it is, that is a holy mission, that your work is there to glorify God because His name is your greatest passion. And so you know when God's going to take care of me, but, God, but God's put me here so I can bring glory to the name of my Jesus. I can bring glory to the name of God in one way. Not only that, you enter into this relationship with God that blesses you because you know I'm taken care of. And when that happens, you start to learn to give. Proverbs 21, 26 says, Some people are always greedy for more, but the godly love to give. Why is that? Because, hey, my stuff's already taken care of. So if I see somebody else in need, man, I'm going to give and help them out. I'm going to reach out and touch them. It means that you have peace because Philippians 4.19 says, And the same God will take care of me, will supply all of your needs from his glorious riches, which he has given us in Jesus, in Christ Jesus. So I'm not worried about I can live in peace even in the middle of when the news is all talking about an economic collapse and how bad things are and things are going to be so tight. I can live in peace because my investments are not in the world, even if i got some dollar signs over there. My investments are in eternity, and my trust and my insurance is in God. Amen. And I know I'm okay. You're going to go so much deeper in a relationship with God because you're in that trust relationship with God. And let me tell you, there's a litmus test. One of the litmus tests that will show where your heart is is what you do with your money. Colossians 3, verse 5. Colossians 3, verse 5. So put to death the sinful, earthly things lurking within you. Get rid of that stuff. Have nothing to do with sexual immorality, impurity, lust, and evil desires. Don't be greedy, for a greedy person is an idolater. Worshipping the things of this world. Ouch. Don't be greedy. What are we talking about? I'm not greedy. 
Are you wanting stuff that you don't have? Are you at peace about your finances? Because are you looking at God to supply your needs? Or are you looking to someone else to supply your needs? Because that's idolatry. You're going to see more miracles in your relationship with God. And you're going to be united in relationships with others in the body of Christ as you give to them and they give to you and you connect in a deep spiritual connection. You are united in something powerful. You see, do not, the promise, you're not going to steal, goes so deep because it says you're not going to worry about the stuff, material stuff of life. Because God wants to give you good stuff. But more than that, He's promised to take care of 